Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to get into some of uh, the actual reason why we're learning JavaScript, and that's to modify HTML elements. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a script tag. We always need the script to be just above the body. Oh, by the way, the reason that it's above the body and not in our head, well, we used to put JavaScript in the head, but now we put JavaScript at the bottom of our page so that all the extra HTML can load first. We put it at the bottom of the page so that, for example, if we have an h1 in here, hello world, and we just refresh our page, we see hello world. And basically, if we're going to be using any elements in JavaScript, this needs to exist first. The HTML needs to be there before the JavaScript is loaded. And in some cases, if you put JavaScript above this, the JavaScript will load. It will then try to look for an h1 called hello world or has some hello world text in it and it won't find it because it hasn't been loaded. And yes, one line can make a difference. So in most programming languages, generally a program runs from the top to the bottom. JavaScript is no different. It runs from the top to the bottom. And so we're going to put hello world in here uh, and let's give this an ID. So this is just some basic HTML, and I have an HTML course if you need a quick little HTML refresher uh, called the Ultimate HTML Developer. And so let's just give this an ID of test. Now, when we save and refresh this, this is not going to do anything. It's not going to do a single thing for us. And so what we need to do is we need to learn how to actually select this element and then be able to modify it a little bit. And so JavaScript is largely known for working with HTML and XHTML markup. Basically anything that has tags like this, JavaScript is pretty good at working with. Almost like it was designed to work that way. So there are many different ways to select an HTML element or a group of elements or like all the H1s on a page, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick with something basic called get element by ID. And so it looks like this. Let's uh, move that up. Document.get element by ID, and then we just put the ID in here. And so this ID matches test, and that's up there. And if we save this again, we're not going to see anything happens. Doesn't matter how many times we refresh, all it's doing is grabbing this element node. So this is called a node. We need to actually store this in a variable. So let's go ahead and put this in a variable called test. And again, if we refresh our page, nothing's going to happen. But what happens if we go into our console and type test? Oh, look at that. It says h1 with an ID of test. And it's actually selecting it for us. Look at that. So move down, nothing, move up, and it has selected it for us. Now we can do things. So if we hit dot, we can see all sorts of different things in here. And this is where JavaScript gets to be a very, very big world. There are so many things. Actually, so far, we are looking at event listeners, more event listeners, more event listeners, more event listeners. And it just keeps going and going and going. We can change the style. We can change the title tag if we wanted to. We could animate it. We could give it a class name or remove a class name. We could do all sorts of things in here. But let's go ahead and figure out what the text is. And this is just dot inner text. And that's just going to give us the text. We could also do this with HTML. We could do dot inner HTML. And so we can see that this now says hello world. Knowing that, we can now go in here and say test dot inner HTML. And this is if we want to write HTML. So we could say, uh, let's do an underline, although that's deprecated. Let's do an underline tag anyways. And let's do hello slash you world. And let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. Bam, look at that, it underlined it for us. But if we go and actually view the page source, there's no underline, that's all JavaScript. So what JavaScript did was said, hey, grab that node, grab this h1 element, this one right here, and change the inner HTML. Now what we could do is we could store the old stuff too. So we could say the inner HTML is going to be, hi, welcome to JavaScript for beginners. But let's go ahead and store the old stuff. So let's do var old text. Let's make that camel case. Is equal to test dot inner HTML. And that's just going to grab that inner HTML and store it in a variable and we'll be able to access it through our console. So let's go ahead and save this. Hi, welcome to JavaScript for beginners. And 
If we try to access this variable in here called old text, we should just be able to write, let's make this bigger, old, ah, uh, hello, there it is. That's the old stuff. We stored the old stuff in a variable before we changed it. And now we can actually change it back as well because we still have access to test as a node. Let's go ahead and change the inner text to the old text. And so now we're using variables pretty efficiently at this point. And at the same time, we're also grabbing this entire HTML element, this node, and we're saying, hey, yeah, I understand that you want it to say hello world, but hey, when the page loads and it gets to the JavaScript, actually work some magic and change that for us. And that's what JavaScript did for us. Now, again, there are a lot of different things we can do on a HTML node. So we can type in test, hit dot, and then we could literally just scroll through this for days and days and days and days and days. And you can see this list just goes on and on and on and on. And so JavaScript is a really big world. In all honesty, we're not going to learn about every single thing in here because we are going to be here for a very, very long time. And my teaching methodology is to teach you how to learn efficiently so that uh, if down the road you're working at a company and they're using something called scroll to, well, you know how to access scroll to and you know how to figure out what that is, even if we don't learn it in this course. Now we're going to learn a lot in this course, but there's just no possible way we can learn every single thing. So what I would like you to do as a, a little test, a little, a little bit of hands-on experience, create a new HTML file and just create any tag. It does not have to be an H1. Give it an ID of something. It doesn't really matter what that ID is as long as it matches this value here. Not this one. This is the name of our variable, but this one right here. And this one here, those two need to match. So create that element and then select the node with get element by ID. Remember we use document dot get element by ID. We'll talk more about what that dot means down the road when we get into more advanced JavaScript. And then just change the inner HTML. Maybe give it uh, underline, maybe italicize it, maybe make it bold. You can do anything you like with it. You can write any HTML you want in there as long as you use inner HTML. And if you're ever just going to change the inner text, you could always just do inner text. And then your browser doesn't have to parse and render a bunch of JavaScript, or not JavaScript, HTML. It could just do regular text, which is actually a lot more efficient. Go ahead, give that a shot. If you get stuck, leave a question down below and I am happy to help you. Otherwise, let's head on over to that next lesson.